Doesn't the disco ball look pretty? Definitely one of my best posters of 2022. <laughs> Hi, my name's Amy. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Before we get into it, I have got a teeny weeny little confession about the title of this video. So the title of this video is How to Get Rid of Fungus Gnats for Good. And that title is a teeny weeny little bit uh, clickbaity. But wait, before you go anywhere, don't click off because I do think I can help with fungus gnats. I really do. The reason I'm saying that it's clickbaity is because I don't think you can get rid of fungus gnats or any houseplant pest for good, like forever, like treat, like doing this treatment and then never getting fungus gnats again. Like, I, I just don't think it's at all possible. And the reason I don't think it's possible is because fungus gnats and houseplant pests come into our homes in loads of different ways. So from windows being open, from plants that we buy and bring into our homes, from soils that we buy and bring into our homes, like fruit and veg. I've had thrips on a basil plant that I bought to like cook with. <laughs> They'll come in, they come in off our clothes. Like if you go out for a walk out in nature, there, there are bugs out there. They can hang out on your clothes, come in and then, you know, voila, you've got spider mites again. <laughs> I don't think you can eradicate pests from a plant collection and then never, ever, ever get them again. I do, however, think that you can prevent massive infestations and being proactive with your preventative treatments helps to kind of get rid of them, not for good, but pretty much. So the reason, the reason why I'm putting this video out is because last year I barely had fungus gnats and I've been collecting houseplants for how long has it been? <laughs> I've, I've had houseplants for forever. Like me and Steve have lived together for eight and a half years. I've had houseplants that entire time. I've probably started seriously collecting them four, five, maybe five years ago now, actually. Um, and even before, like I've had houseplants like when I live with my parents, like at home in my room. Um, but it was when I started seriously kind of collecting them that I really started to start, no, that's, that's a, I just lied to you. I definitely had pests before I started like seriously collecting but I didn't deal with them I'd, I'd just be like oh ooh, gross in the bin which is not ideal and then when I started seriously collecting and I had plants that I really kind of cared about and were harder to like replace that was when I started really paying attention to pests and how to treat them and and that's kind of moved into preventing so when I started getting pests, I would use, you know, the chemical pesticides, the, like all of the tips and tricks out on the internet, the kind of, you know, for fungus gnats in particular, there's stuff like letting your plants dry out. Don't do that. And I am a chronic underwaterer and I do let my plants dry out, <laughs> but not on purpose. It is accidental and I'm getting better at it, but that advice of letting your plants dry out, like I can understand where it comes from because damp soil is preferred for fungus gnats and their larvae, but it damages the plant. Like it's gonna kill off roots, your plant's gonna struggle. And then a struggling plant, an unhealthy plant, generally attracts more pests. So you could get into a vicious cycle there. Don't let your plants dry out. Um, what other ones are there? Like putting cinnamon on the top of the soil because cinnamon's an antifungal elements to it and the kind of, oh, 
I'm losing my trailer for ADHD. Cinnamon has antifungal qualities to it and therefore kind of disrupts the organic matter that the fungus gnats and the larvae like to eat. I think that's the reasoning behind cinnamon. There's a fungus gnat right there. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> Fine. I'm going to sort him out in a minute anyway. Um, what other ones? I've used Diatomaceous Earth, which to be fair does work quite well in that it's, it's like a powder that you'd sprinkle on top of the soil and then fungus gnats can't get to the soil, they can't go through it to lay their eggs and then any, that, any fungus gnats that are hatching out of the soil can't get out of it to fly away and start the cycle again. What else have I used to... That might be it for... Oh, and the sticky traps. So sticky traps, which are a part of my method now and they do work really well at catching adults. So those are some of the treatments that I see recommended a lot. I've tried them a lot over the years. I was using them quite consistently, particularly the diatomaceous earth and the sticky traps. Um, and then it got to a point a couple of years ago where I was just like, I want to find a better way of doing this. So I think at the time I was struggling with fungus gnats, spider mites, thrips and mealybugs and like I I was struggling and obviously my plants were too but I was struggling in the sense I just couldn't keep on top of all the different treatments because they all need like repeat treatments and it's 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 a lot of energy it's it's a lot of time as well actually it's a lot of time a lot of energy money it all costs money and I wish I just felt like there needed to be a better way and at the time I was listening, I was kind of binge listening to Jane Perrone's podcast On The Ledge and she had um, an episode talking about biological controls and one of the guests on that episode was a lady called Tessa who um, owns and runs Ladybird Plant Care and so I went down the biological control route which if you ask me, I don't know, even it, even like a year before this, this kind of point when I first listened to that episode, if I would on purpose bring in bugs to my home, <laughs> I would have said no, absolutely not. That gives me the creeps. <laughs> Whereas now, <laughs> I'm in a very different place and I'm hoping this video might help you rethink biological controls if you've never considered them or never even heard of them before. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to kind of impart a little bit of knowledge and experience because this, where are we now? We're like going into, I think I'm going into like my third year now with biological controls and honestly, I'm not coming back. So yeah. That's what this video is going to be about. Biological ugh, ugh, words. Biological controls. Oh my god. Biological controls for fungus gnats. Okay, so before we kind of get into the video a little bit more, I just want to say, if we've never met before, like if if this is if this video is how you're finding me welcome I'm so glad you're here like genuinely really glad you're here I think I said at the beginning but my name's Amy <laughs> so before we get into the actual like preparing the treatment I wanted to talk a little bit about fungus gnats so they are those really annoying black little flies that flap around they like try and get up your nose oh they are an absolute nuisance they're so annoying but the actual adult, the fungus gnat that is flying around, doesn't really bother our plants. So it doesn't eat the leaves, it doesn't like lay eggs in the leaves, it generally leaves, that was a lot of leaves, it generally leaves the plant that we can see alone. But it does lay its eggs in the soil and that's the problem. So a fungus gnat's life cycle, I, th I think it's like anywhere from two weeks to a month depending on like temperature and conditions I suppose and I think I've definitely like thinking back to when I have had 
really bad kind of infestations with, with fungus gnats. It'd be like one day there's like nothing and then the next day, which happens to be like a nice sunny warm day like it is today, there's loads of them around and I'm like, where have these come from? And now having the knowledge that I have around the life cycle, that, that makes sense now. But yeah, so the fungus gnat lays its eggs in the soil and then larva, larvae, however you want to pronounce it, hatch out and these are, they're the things they do the damage, so they eat the kind of organic matter in the substrate, including your plant's roots. And that's how they can damage your plant. And that's the problem. So the larvae then turn into pupae or pupa. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. And I don't think this stage of the fungus gnat's life cycle, it does too much. I think that's when it's like turning from the larvae into the fly, I think. <laughs> So when it's done with that bit, it then hatches out, emerges from the soil and kind of repeats the process. So it'll find, I mean, it may stay in the same pot, I guess. I don't know if it's lazy, it might not fly away. <laughs> but it'll find another pot, more soil, lay more eggs, and then, you know, we're back to the start. The start. And I'm not sure how many eggs fungus gnats lay. I feel like I remember reading somewhere that it was like sort of ridiculous, like 200 or something. If I can find the information, I'll put it on the screen now. Um, but yeah, so if you aren't managing <laughs> or staying on top of treating them, then things are going to get worse. And I, th I really, I really believe that you have to tackle the kind of in the soil part of the life cycle as well as the adults. So like sticky traps work really well. I have some sticky traps. I'm gonna be using them. They work really well at catching the adults, preventing them from laying further eggs. That's great. But these can't do anything for what's going on inside the soil. It's not gonna stop the larvae and pupae hatching and creating more fungus gnats. They're just not. So yeah, these aren't just gonna, they're not gonna do everything. They work brilliantly though. So what is going to, tackle the in the substrate and that's where nematodes come in. Nematodes are like microscopic, they look like worms. I don't think they are worms but they look like worms <laughs> and they're, they're literally microscopic and I think they come in a few different forms but I have like the powder form. I will put all of the details of this below like where to find it so I've already mentioned them, but this is from Ladybird Plant Care, um, or Tessa, <laughs> it's from Tessa, Ladybird Plant Care. She did send me these out without, I didn't have to pay for them. I have paid for them in the past, a few times now, and I just wanna be honest with you that I didn't actually pay for this pack. These two things came together. She has them as a bundle deal on her website, and she also has them where you can buy them separately. So, these come in powder, oh, I don't know why I put it down. These come in powder form. There are a few different types of nematodes out there for different kind of pests. They're often used in outdoor gardening, but these ones are, they're actually called fruit and veg nematodes, but they really successfully treat fungus gnats in houseplants too. And so I'm gonna prepare them with you in a minute, but I just wanna talk a little bit about my experience with using nematodes because mind-blowingly effective like so effective so I I think last year I probably used nematodes it was either like two or three times and purely not purely mostly out of prevention so over I like I didn't really have fungus gnats I think I literally had like I spotted one or two flapping around and I'm like, right, getting on to Ladybird Plant Care and I'm ordering some nematodes to nip this in the bud because if there's one or two flapping around, there's more brewing in the soil. Like there's no getting away from it. So with ordering the nematodes, anytime I saw them, I wholeheartedly believe I prevented like a full infestation. So I'm pretty sure I did, I definitely did one kind of spring, Springtime. I don't think it was summer, was it summer? It might have been like late spring last year. And then also kind of autumn time. And I'm, I can't remember if I did one like this time last year, like in the January, 
So that's why I'm saying it's two or three treatments that I did last year. But with those definitely two, potentially three treatments, I did not have an infestation of fungus gnats. And I think that is the key <laughs> to being rid of fungus gnats, kind of for good really, is doing this two or three times a year and having sticky traps out fairly regularly. So I do, I have had sticky traps out all year round, but I've had black ones out and I will show you some, have I got any up? Yeah, I have got a few, I can see a few up there. So I'll put in some like B-roll now of the black traps because I, like the yellow ones are very effective. They really are, but <laughs> they're ugly. <laughs> like you, if you don't know me or you haven't quite noticed, I quite like a neutral, palette I love I love bright colors I really do but not in my decor so I have quite a neutral black white beige natural tones obviously green palettes in my decor and the yellow just stands out Ooh, it stands out so had a little look and found that there are black uh, fungus snap traps and I was like oh yes we're getting some of those and I you don't like I said, I haven't really had an issue with fungus gnats, so I don't necessarily need them, but I quite like having them just so that I can have a little peek every now and then because if fungus gnats are getting stuck on them, that means I need to do another one of these treatments. And they work just as well. I have spotted a gnat every now and then on them, so that's when I call these guys in. But I have got, so I've got yellow ones to put up a little bit more today because so this video is coming because I have not stayed on top of it. I probably should have done another treatment a couple of weeks ago, really, because that's all it takes. And I'm definitely noticing, I think, I don't think I would have edited out. <laughs> Tried tapping one a minute ago. <laughs> I missed it. So I've definitely noticed a good few fungus gnats flying around. It's, it's probably the worst it's been in the last year. It, where it's at right now. I've done it, I've done it for you, for this video. <laughs> I'm, oh my God, I'm joking. <laughs> I've done it because I was lazy. <laughs> and I didn't get around to putting in, well, maybe not lazy, maybe that's an ADHD thing. I didn't get around to putting in the um, the order. And then I ended up speaking to Tess. I just called her Tess. I don't know if she likes being called Tess. I know her as Tessa, so sorry, Tessa. So when you get these, they come with like a little, I mean, this is like, this is usually the wrapping. They come with some instructions and they do say um, that they work the most effectively when there is a lot of larvae. So when there is an infestation, like if you have an infestation and you use these, you'll probably notice quite a reduction quite quickly in the amount of adults that you see around. So it's not necessarily considered a preventative treatment. So that is how I use it and that is how I will continue to use it because it works so damn well. Like I'm not willing to go back to never using this. <laughs> I'm going to keep using it as part of my treatment system. So my plan is for this year to do it now and then I will probably do it again late spring and then again in the autumn and that will probably be my cycle for forever more as long as I have houseplants which will be forever so forever more. It does say on the instructions to use all of it all at once so you put it all into water and mix it up and then water your plants with it i have never done that and i'm sorry tessa if you're watching this because <laughs> obviously you want people to use your products as described in the instructions maybe you know read the instructions <laughs> and make your own judgment but Basically, the reason why I haven't ever used it all is because I, I mean, I haven't actually read the instructions since the first time. <clears throat> but when I first read them, I found them a little bit confusing and I think that is the ADHD in me. I'm not really an, an instruction follower. I just generally do it and see what happens. So I've always just kind of been like, oh, I'll use this little bit and put it in there and, and then I'll put the rest of it. So you can store them in the fridge. Um, I think it's only up to like a week after getting them. Again, I have stored them for a smidge longer and used them. I don't know how effective they would have been, but it didn't harm my plants. So. Um, 
I'm going to do the same again today because I'm, I'm probably just going to use half of this box and I'm probably going to use half but in like several different loads of a watering can. I'm definitely getting my words muddled and there are so many things I want to say. So well, on one of my first goes, it might have even been my first time with these, I thought I might have like overdosed on the nematodes in the water like because there's kind of specific instructions around the amount of water to the amount of nematodes and mouse is not my strong point and instructions are neither so I just kind of eyeballed it and then I watered my Thai constellation it was brand new at that time and I was like oh my god are they are they gonna damage my roots <laughs> what if there's not enough larvae in there for them to kill like are they gonna hurt my plants and then Tessa was like no they won't harm your plants though. I don't think you can like overdose on nematodes. I guess, I I don't know, maybe they just won't survive as, if there's not enough, fun, uh, not enough larvae in the soil, like maybe they won't be able to survive as long. I don't know, but basically these, these little guys, they are little worm-like structures that need water to get around. So you definitely don't want to be letting your plants dry out because once they're in there, if the conditions are right they can hang out in there for quite a little while like they can just swim around but they work by so they get into the larvae through like holes like mouth and breathing parts i don't really know the anatomy of a of a, of a fungus that larvae <laughs> but they get inside it and then they release a bacteria that kills the larvae and then they kind of, you know, carry on, do it to the next one and the next one and the next one. And basically the larvae end up dead and they're therefore not able to turn into pupae and then into fungus gnats. So that is how they work. Do I need to say anything else about this part before I make it? So I might have missed some information about the nematodes. I don't think I have, but if I have, I will put it in the description. There will be links to the website and like more information about nematodes and fungus gnats and treatments. And um, I believe on the website there is like a contact form. And I've also found Tessa really responsive on the Ladybird Plant Care Instagram account. I'm sorry, Tessa, if you end up getting loads of messages on there <laughs> after this video. Um, but she is, she's got so much knowledge around pest prevention and treatment. So definitely highly highly recommend using that i've been i should say in 2021 me and tessa did work together for a bit when i was kind of doing a bit more brand work i suppose with through instagram and then 2022 i took some time off that and now i'm hoping to be working again with her in 2023 so the links to the actual products in the description will be affiliate links and that means if you click on them and you purchase through those links, I will earn like a little bit of, I suppose, commission as like a thank you from Tessa to me for sending you her way. There's no extra cost to you, but I know some people don't like using affiliate links, so it's obviously up to you, no pressure, but you just need to know that I might earn a little bit of money if you click on that link and you buy something, so thank you if you do. <laughs> well, let's get into making the treatment up. Okay, this is my water can. I've just got some water in it. Here are the nematodes, my spoon, and this is the packaging. I just wanted to show you that it says on the packaging that you can do a soil drench, which is kind of what we're doing today. There is a foliar drench where you kind of put it into a sprayer and you can spray it on. And I think that's for different types of pests, so not for fungus gnats because they don't really bother the leaves. And then this is tree drench because, like I said, you can use it outside. Does it say anything else on here that you need to know? Look, it says use the entire packet at one time. Do not store stock, <laughs> stock solution. Um, so a stock solution, I suppose. I've never like mixed up the whole thing and then stored the water, like the, the mixture and reused it. I've, I've only ever left some nematodes in the packet, <laughs> which I still think it's telling you not to do. So maybe don't do exactly what I do, but this is what I do and I'm just gonna carry on doing what I do. <laughs> I'm basically going to take this big clump here and pop it in and I've got no idea what the measurements of that is. Oh my goodness, I'm holding the camera and trying to do this one handed. <laughs> yeah, this is what it looks like, a little powder, pop it in, 
and on go. We'll just break it up and give it a stir. I'm now going to just water my plants as I would normally do with this solution. Um, yeah. This is actually one that has the uh, the black traps in. It's got a bit of moss on it and some fluff but there is like one two two nuts on there no idea if you it's not even focusing on it <laughs> right there's a nut there and a nut there <laughs> lovely look at you seeing that up close So I'm not going to alter all of my plants with you today because I'm also going to film a uh, plant chores and chat video which I think would have probably gone up by the time you're seeing this. I think that video would have probably already gone up but part of that is going to be watering so I'm not going to water them all now. But I am going to stick some of these traps up so they do, they come with a kind of grid mark so you can chop them off. They also come with a little hole punched through so you could like put some string through and tie them up. I just like to kind of place them on top of the soil so that's what I'm gonna do and maybe then that'll help me find the actual culprit of the fungus gnats that have been flapping around. My pie constellation that's going to be it for this video. I really recommend giving nematodes a go. If you've struggled with fungus gnats, if you're worried about fungus gnats kind of taking over, give them a go. I truly believe that they've been just game changing for me and my plant collection and my ability to care for them and stay on top of that care. They've, they've just changed the game, honestly. And it's so easy. Just pop them in some water and then away you go and you're done. Like it's, it's fantastic. I really do truly recommend. Um, as I said, there will be more information in the links in the description. Again, if you decide to purchase through those links, they are affiliate links, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. And I don't know if Tessa is on YouTube. If she is, I'll also ask her to check in on the comments and ask, answer any if she said but if, if I can't answer the questions I will direct you to Tessa because she is a pro. Anyway thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and it's been informative and you might consider giving nematodes a go hit that like button so I know that you enjoyed it and if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button too. There's a little bell as well so you can tap that bell and get notified whenever I post so that you don't miss anything and if you're not already following me on Instagram I would love it if you joined me over there too. Links will be in the description. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in my next one. Bye. So that's gonna be it for this video. I really, really recommend giving fungus gnats a go. Oh my God, don't give fungus gnats a go. Oh.